I'm going to show you how you can take any wired USB keyboard and make the cable detachable. This mod is pretty straightforward and quite easy to do and I'm going to show you all of the steps so let's go. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need is a wired USB keyboard. This mod will work on any wired USB keyboard, but depending on which one you have, that might be slightly harder or easier compared to this one. It doesn't matter what you have, this is just a cheap, crappy HP rubber dome keyboard. The next thing we're going to need is some female USB ports. I bought these off AliExpress, they came out to about a dollar each if you buy five of them. These are Type-C, waterproof, and they have easily solderable tabs on them. They also have a robust molded mount point, but you don't need these fancy of connectors. You also don't have to throw away the cable that you cut off because you can just add a connector onto that and reuse it as a detachable cable. You can use any USB port. I have leftover male and female ends from different projects that have either failed or components that have died and then you don't need to buy anything because you can just scavenge it from some other project. First we're going to be doing what I consider the hardest part of this modification and that is just getting inside of the keyboard. Surprisingly, I've never opened a keyboard like this before. Initially I thought there's a bunch of screws on the bottom so let's try that first. Depending on what keyboard you have, this first step might be harder or easier. Now that the screws are out, I'm just going to try and pick it up by the legs and hopefully it'll come in half and it is not doing that. So it looks like it has more mounting than just those screws. Most keyboards will have clips that surround the perimeter of the case, so that's what I'm trying next. And I can see some areas where it looks like they're using clips. I struggled with this for a little bit and I was taking my time because if you just rip it apart then you're risking just tearing up those tabs and it's probably not going to go back together very well after that. Once you can pry it up initially, it usually goes smoother after that. Once I got all the clips, it finally exploded open kind of violently. I really wasn't expecting that and I didn't want it to land on my zillion dollar model pieces but I'm kind of limited on space right now. My model is fine by the way. Here's the inner workings of a rubber dome. I think it looks pretty cool. Here I'm going to show you where I'm going to be modifying the hole for the port and you don't have to put it here. That's another benefit. You can have your port anywhere on the keyboard case, wherever you want it. This already has a hole in the back so I'm just going to be using some of that hole but I do have to make it bigger. For the inner USB wires, you do want to give yourself enough slack so that it makes it easier to solder and manage. I would err on the side of caution and go too long instead of too short. After I had mocked up roughly where I wanted it, I went ahead and made the cut. Your keyboard may look different on the inside, but as long as you have four wires coming out, then you should be able to do this. Once I made my cut, I can now start stripping away the insulation so that I can have some leads to solder. That little black ring that you see with the USB wires wrapped around it, that's called a ferrite core. Because USB signals oscillate at such a high frequency, this can introduce a lot of noise and interference to your computer. This metal ring helps suppress that electromagnetic interference. If you ever see one of those warts at the end of a USB cable, that's what that is. Also, the shielding that I'm cutting out right here additionally aids in the suppression of that interference. USB 2.0 just has four pins and that's black, green, white, red. Black is negative, red is positive, and then you have green and white, which are the positive and negative for the data transmission. Just remember to line up the pins according to the printing on the PCB. If you've scavenged a port and you don't have any printing or even a PCB, that's fine, just check the pinouts online. For example, let's say you have a micro USB port, just type in female micro USB pinout and there you go. Now that it's all soldered up, I'm going to start modifying the case to allow the port to sit inside of the case. I'm just going to take some measurements and then roughly start cutting away and then filing and sanding until I get a semi-nice fit. This is only a $5 crummy dirty keyboard so I'm not super concerned with trying to make this look really nice. Once I've taken my measurements, I'm then going to take away some of the bigger chunks with some flush cutters. Once I've cut roughly the size of the hole, I'm then going to start going slower and doing some filing to get it much tighter and closer to the port. 
take your time here because once you cut it out you can't really put it back in so just do a little bit at a time check then recheck again another good thing about having a detachable cable where you're making your own port you can make it come out the left side the right side you can make it come out the top whatever you want got the bottom in there pretty good it's not a perfect cut but it will do the job and serve its function and now I got to make provisions for the top of the case and repeating that same process just on the other side of the case I could have made this look a lot nicer by using a dremel and some smaller files but I'm going for speed here Now that the top is done that's looking decent or at least functional so the next step is now that you have your holes and everything's provisioned correctly you can start laying down a whole ton of hot glue i think it's good to overdo it here you want to put some on the bottom and the top and the back you basically want to saturate this because it's basically just press fit in here having a whole bunch of reinforcement is not a bad idea I would highly recommend doing a test connection before even laying down any hot glue. I would recommend putting that top case half on while the glue is still warm. This is going to compress and squeeze that still malleable warm glue around the port to where it is going to give the best connection possible. After it's all assembled, check out your work and look at how cool that is. Now you have a detachable wired keyboard. I did complete it and this was actually the first time of even testing the connection. I just YOLO'd it so please do as I say not as I do because I'm dumb. Despite how fast I was going it actually doesn't look too bad almost like it came like that from the factory. A factory with very poor craftsmanship is still a factory. Anyway let's test it out and look at that it actually works. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of typing but I only had notepad installed on this computer and notepad plus plus looks just way better with that dark mode. And I also have to bump up the font so you can actually see what I'm typing even though it's kind of irrelevant because I'm just trying to show you that it indeed does work. This project is super easy and depending on what you have you might not even need to buy anything. You might be wondering why do I want a detachable cable? Just a few reasons are one that maybe your cable's already broken and you need to replace it. Maybe you want a different cable or a longer cable. Maybe you keep breaking cables and you want something that's easily replaceable. Also having a detachable cable does make the keyboard more portable. The only real drawback is the port on the keyboard now is a bit more fragile than just having a direct wire. This was just a quick one that I thought anyone could do but I do have a lot more projects in the works so stay tuned. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.